to write a reaction to that outcome, changing the state of the program. Then do something else. The moment any one of these conditions evaluates to true. So we finally made it, the long-awaited part two of the beginner's guide to programming for game developers, where we take programming concepts and wrap them in a sort of game dev-centric focus. So in the last video, we focused on classes, functions, variables, and data types. And in this one, we're gonna follow on and look at conditional flow and how to structure condition within your program. And we'll start with some basic concepts and work our way into some more advanced ways of thinking. Let's get straight into it. Condition logic and flow is at the very heart of programming. If a program was a tree, the condition statements would reside at the point at which the branches diverge from each other. You could also think of it like a fork in the road, with the path you choose leading to a different place in your code and program state. And to be a skillful game developer or programmer or whatever you want to call yourself, it is absolutely essential that you master this area of skill and knowledge. And that, my friends, is why we are here today. So what exactly is a condition statement? What does it do? It's a decision-making mechanism that checks to see if something is true and then allows you, the programmer, to write a reaction to that outcome, changing the state of the program. If thirsty, then drink. Makes sense, right? This if-then construct, as it's known, is universal to all programming languages. So how do we write one? Where do we actually start? First, we need a condition to check. Let's continue with this thirsty example, because I'm pretty damn thirsty. Most languages wrap this statement in parentheses, prefix it with an if, then add curly brackets, known as the condition block. So if something is true, then do something else. When writing a condition block with a single line, as in this example, you can drop the curly braces like so. There are appropriate times for this usage, but when beginning, I recommend keeping the curly brackets, though having them occupies more line space there is less chance of creating code formatting errors. All right, so what if is thirsty is not true? What will happen? Well, the condition will evaluate to false and the drink function or any other code inside the condition block will never be executed. The program or compiler will only run the then section if the preceding condition evaluates to true. That's not to say you must only use true and false booleans within your condition statement. You can, and will, use a variety of symbols known as operators to check all manner of things in a variety of different ways. But each of these conditions, no matter how rich and complex, will always evaluate to a binary outcome of either true or false. So as we now know, condition statements check to see if something is true. And with that, they can also check if it is true that something is false. One of the ways we can do this is by using the exclamation symbol, which is a logical operator. Putting a exclamation symbol before the condition means I want to know if the opposite of the statement is true. The exclamation essentially means not, as in, is this condition not true? This suit is not black. Some quick examples to consider. Is the game started or is it not started? Is the player dead or is the player not dead? Another way of writing this is to use the double equals operator, which checks the equality between two values. These two statements, though written differently, do exactly the same thing. Similarly, these two statements also do the same thing. These differences in syntax partly fall into the realm of personal preference, much like the age-old debate of where the first curly bracket should sit. Should it be on the first line, or should it be on a new line? Both of these are correct. Your preferences may depend on the language or coding environment you find yourself in, as different developer communities may adopt different styles. Do not get caught up in the politics that often surround such trivial things. The important thing is consistency. Pick one and stick to it, at least within your own code set. As a developer, you should be flexible and be able to adapt to different environments seamlessly. Wasting time deliberating over such trivial nonsense is a nice way to keep you from creating good content. It's a trap, but I digress. Else if allows us to add additional checks within one condition sequence. The compiler will work its way through these conditions one by one. The moment any one of these conditions evaluates to true, the compiler will execute the code inside the condition block and immediately stop working its way down the rest of the stack, jumping to the end to continue processing whatever code may be below outside the condition sequence. On the contrary, if all of these condition blocks were if statements, 
the compiler would continue checking all, regardless of whether or not the top ones were true. It will not stop. Consequently, if all these conditions were true, all three condition blocks would be executed within a split second, causing the player to simultaneously attempt to drink, eat and sleep. This is not inherently a problem. It really depends on what you're trying to achieve with your code. But in this specific example, it could cause some minor issues. Else is a condition that you can add to the very end of your condition stack. It's like a fallback in case all the previous conditions evaluate to false. It guarantees that at the very least, the code in the else block will be executed. In its simplest usage, you can have an else with just an if statement. All condition sequences, however, must start with an if. You cannot start a condition sequence with just an else or an else if. No, 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 no. You also cannot put an else before an else if. The convention is if, else if, else. Conditions can also be nested within other conditions, further examining the program state. There is no language limitation as to how deeply you can nest conditions, though readability should always be a consideration. And of course, what you are doing in any one of these condition blocks should also be a consideration. The deeper you go, the harder it may be to troubleshoot and manage should something go wrong. Logical operators come in three flavors, and, or, and not. We already met our friend not earlier in the video. Not. These logical operators are used to evaluate multiple conditions in a single line, allowing more flexibility and control. In our previous example, we used this nested condition. Using the AND operator, we could have written the condition like this instead, which is functionally exactly the same thing. So what about our other buddy OR? Consider this condition stack. If is tired, go to sleep. Else if is sleepy, go to sleep. Instead of this, we could instead write this. If is tired, OR is sleepy, then go to sleep which is much cleaner. You won't find any noticeable performance difference between these, but the one on the right is more efficient to both code and read. It also saves us from repeating the same go to sleep function twice, which you want to avoid where possible. You can also structure multiple checks within one condition statement using parentheses or brackets to determine the priority of operations, which is powerful, but if taken too far can lead to code that is harder to read, write and edit. Have you ever had too many or not enough brackets? Yeah, you know you have. Comparison operators, sometimes called relational operators, are, as the name suggests, used to compare two values and are specifically used inside condition statements to establish a true or false outcome. Let's take a look at some of the most common ones. The double equal sign checks for equality between two values. Things like, is the player's name John? Yeah, sure. Is 10 equal to 10? <laughs> I hope so. Always be sure to be using two equal signs, as using one will not throw an error. Instead, it will silently cause chaos within your program as you assign one value to the other. We then have the not equal to operator, which simply checks if something is not the same as something else. Is the current screen not equal to the title screen? Is one not equal to two? Is it? And finally, we have our greater than or less than operators, which typically check numeric values against each other. You may have learnt about this stuff in school at some point. Yep, that's right. If only you knew maths could help with game dev, you may have actually paid attention. Is two greater than one? Well, that depends on context. I mean, two heart attacks are not greater than one, but numerically, yes, two is greater than one. Is the player's health less than or equal to zero? If true, then kill the player. If not, continue playing. Or perhaps if the player's experience is more than or equal to 1000, then call the level up function. You should now be equipped with foundational knowledge to write conditional flow using the if then else construct, nested conditions, logical operators and comparison operators. So I just want to say congratulations on taking the time to learn these concepts. Programming and game development changed my life, and I hope it can change yours too. If you'd like to chat with me about any of these topics, you can come visit me on the Lost Relic Games Discord channel. And a thank you to these people who are supporting me on Patreon at the moment. If you would like your name up here in all its glory, consider becoming a Patreon. Doing so will also give you access to a private repository of useful Unity project files and source code. I'll drop the link down below. And finally, if you liked this video, and you want to see more, and you are not already subscribed, well then, hit that subscribe button. 
See you guys.